Well, the Cooney County Sheriff's Office offering free home safety security checks to property owners hoping to avoid a break-in. KXY 4's crime and safety reporter Jeff Humphrey working for you tonight with expert advice about keeping those burglars away. Gary Schultz is a former Oceanside police officer who's still fighting crime one house at a time. You want to make it as tough as you can for them to where they decide it's not worth it and move on. Schultz is touring this Post Falls home looking for weak spots in the way it's locked up. As you do have a deadbolt, but your strike plates are independent, and I have a a door that I can show you that has a strike plate, goes all the way through, way through. questionable authority for some more cop watching. I was back in state line Idaho this time and wanted to bring you guys the footage and a message. I hope you liked the intro to this video. The song is Man Down and you really should listen to the entire song. Go check it out in its full length on Blood of the Braves YouTube channel. Be sure to find him on Bandcamp or SoundCloud as well. All the links are in the description. We really need to support independent artists like Kyle who are speaking truth to power. It's not an easy thing to speak against the mainstream. Artists like him need our support. Again, I've included all the links in the description and also at the end of this video. Please go check out his content. Leave him a comment on YouTube and check him out on the other platforms. The more we support people like Kyle, the better chance we have of waking up the sheeple to what our rulers are doing. This night of cop watching in state line was very busy. I didn't have any interaction, which believe it or not is a very good thing. I spent most of the night going back and forth on this little strip trying to point out to the people in their cars where these extortion artists were hiding. I did a pretty good job. There was only one time a person was pulled over while I was there and no tickets were issued. As I play the footage from Friday night, I want you to think about a couple of things. I've been talking a lot recently about the idea of anarchy or voluntarism. When I changed this channel's name from News Now Northwest to Questionable Authority, I did a video on what anarchy really means. It means no rulers, yet we have been conditioned to believe it means chaos and lack of government. I invite everyone to put down our preconceived notions of what anarchy means and open your mind. I'm not saying having no rulers would be easy. Yes, there are dangers in this world, but government gives us a false sense of security. Like government can actually do anything to keep these dangerous things from happening to us. Government is reactionary. It is always there after the fact to tell you how it can solve the problem for the future, which it never seems to do. Look, I'm not making any claims that anarchy or a community where involvement is completely based on voluntary actions is any kind of utopia. I and others like me believe in personal responsibility. There is a reason we say we will take dangerous freedom any day over peaceful slavery. Life is not easy, and we all must find our way of overcoming obstacles. Government can't do that for us. I want to share with you some excerpts from No Treason, the Constitution of No Authority, penned by one of my favorite voices on government and rulers, Lysander Spooner. Before I proceed, I want you to think about two questions often asked by another YouTuber on the channel High Impact Vlogs. 
Number one, is it ever okay to initiate force on someone who has not harmed somebody else or their property or who has not defrauded anyone else? And number two, does anyone have a higher claim to yourself or your property than you do? Think about those two questions when it comes to government. How do they apply the authority they claim to wield? And how do they hold themselves accountable? I'm going to touch on a couple of things that governments claiming to be free and of the people hold very dear. Voting and taxes. Let's start with voting. Governments like to convince us voting is a voluntary act and by voting we are consenting to the authority of its laws and representatives. It's one of the big tricks of servitude. On the subject of voting being voluntary, Spooner writes, It cannot be said that by voting a man pledges himself to support the Constitution unless the act of voting be a perfectly voluntary one on his part. Yet the act of voting cannot properly be called a voluntary one on the part of any large number of those who do vote. It is rather a measure of necessity imposed upon them by others than one of their own choice. In truth, in the case of individuals, their actual voting is not to be taken as proof of consent, even for the time being. On the contrary, it is to be considered that, without his consent having even been asked, a man finds himself environed by a government that he cannot resist. A government that forces him to pay money, render service, and forgo the exercise of many of his natural rights, under peril of weighty punishments. He sees, too, that other men practice this tyranny over him by the use of the ballot. He sees further that if he will but use the ballot himself, he has some chance of relieving himself from this tyranny of others by subjecting them to his own. In short, he finds himself without his consent so situated, if he use the ballot, he may become a master. If he does not use it, he must become a slave. And he has no other alternative than these two. In self-defense, he attempts the former. His case is analogous to that of a man who has been forced into battle where he must either kill others or be killed himself. Because to save his own life in battle, a man takes the lives of his opponents, it is not to be inferred that the battle is one of his own choosing, neither in contests with the ballot, which is a mere substitute for a bullet. Because as his only chance of self-preservation, a man uses a ballot, it is to be inferred that the contest is one into which he voluntarily entered that he voluntarily set up all his own natural rights as a stake against those of others, to be lost or won by the mere power of numbers. On the contrary, it is to be considered that in an exigency into which he had been forced by others, and in which no other means of self-defense offered, he, as a matter of necessity, used the only one that was left to him. He's saying the reason we vote is because we are compelled to. Just like a soldier thrust into a battle fights out of self-preservation rather than choice, voters are compelled to vote out of self-preservation as well. If they don't vote or the opposition gains more votes, they are subject to being governed by those with whom they do not agree. In that sense, voting is coerced. Why else would someone give up their natural rights to a bunch of rulers if not to preserve those rights from being taken by a different, less savory group of rulers? Another topic of all governments, regardless of their claim to freedom of its citizens, is taxation. It's how governments raise money to pay for the enforcers it hires and the equipment they use. People also claim that in a civilized society, we must collect taxes in order to dole out the necessary services people need and might not otherwise be able to get. Well, who is to say, other than the rulers, what services said tax money should be put towards? Do you really trust the government to use your money? Here are some thoughts from our liberty-loving friend Lysander Spooner on this subject. For this reason, whoever desires liberty should understand these vital facts. One, that every man who puts money into the hands of a government puts into its hands a sword which will be used against him to extort more money from him and also keep him in subjection to its arbitrary will. Number two, that those who will take his money without his consent in the first place will use it for his further robbery and enslavement if he presumes to resist their demands in the future. Number three, that it is a perfect absurdity to suppose that any body of men would ever take a man's money without his consent. 
for any such object as they profess to take it for, that of protecting him, for why should they wish it to protect him if he does not wish them to do so? To suppose they would do so is just as absurd as it would be to suppose they would take his money without his consent for the purpose of buying food or clothing for him when he did not want it. Number four, if a man wants protection, he is competent to make his own bargains for it, and nobody has any occasion to rob him in order to protect him against his will. Number five, the only security men can have for their political liberty consists in their keeping their money in their own pockets until they have assurances perfectly satisfactory to themselves that it will be used as the way they wish it to be used for their benefit and not for their injury. Number six, that no government, so-called, can reasonably be trusted for a moment or reasonably be supposed to have the honest purposes in view any longer than it depends wholly upon voluntary support. These facts are so vital and so self-evident that it cannot be reasonably supposed that anyone will voluntarily pay money to a government for the purpose of securing its protection unless he first make an explicit and purely voluntary contract with it for that purpose. It is perfectly evident, therefore, that neither such voting nor such payment of taxes as actually takes place provides anybody's consent or obligation to support the Constitution. Consequently, we have no evidence at all that the Constitution is binding upon anybody or that anybody is under any contract or obligation whatever to support it, and nobody is under any obligation to support it. I hope this makes you think a little bit more about the necessity of government authoritarians, and I would certainly encourage everyone to read Lysander Spooner for themselves. These excerpts are from his writing, No Treason, The Constitution of No Authority. Links to this and other Lysander Spooner writings are in the description. She's well aware. She knows. Okay. And she's like, <laughs> she was like, don't spend over fifty dollars. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. She understands. Thank you. Yes, I'm just Oh no. Huh? Oh no. Oh no? Nah, I'm just filming him. What's going on? I don't know. I just always film him every time I see him. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering if anything good happened. Well, I nah. They know you by name? Nah, nah, I hope not. Nah, I just hold them accountable. They always come through here. Especially, you know, people coming from Washington, going a mile or two and over the speed limit. I always try to get them on some victimless crime. No, they don't they don't like me very much. <laughs> you guys have a good night. Good night. <laughs> I know this commentary has little to do with what these deputies are doing in these videos. My point is to highlight the system that puts these guys in place, gives them weapons and supposed authority over us to throw us in cages if we don't conform to the rules a small group of people set up for us. People think without authoritarians around to regulate us and our behaviors, society would be chaos. We think this because that is what we have been told by schools, dictionaries, books, television and movies. I think it's time we stop listening to what corporations and politicians tell us. That message is put out by the banksters in charge of the monetary system and the corporate interests that serve them. They see government as a tool of self-preservation and control over the masses, a way to limit competition. The way they enforce this control over us is with these armed thugs in our military industrial complex, which has now expanded to include our prison industry. These order followers are trained, we are the enemy, for simply wanting to make sure they are following their own rules in this rigged system. 
If we aren't going to go along with the left or the right side of the system, we are a danger to it and identified as such. Imagine being an enemy of the state for harming no one, for simply speaking truth to the power they hold over us. My suggestion to everyone, pick up your camera phone anytime you see cops and record them. You might just keep another person from being extorted for a victimless crime. Remember to question authority and stand up to the power of the state. Thanks for checking out another questionable authority video. Feel free to share our content with everyone you know to get the word out. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook as well to stay connected. Links are in the description and on the screen now. Until next time, question everything and be a positive influence on somebody's life each and every day. It's as simple as a smile as you pass by.